My name is Corey Anderson and I will be your host for this evening. We'd like to welcome you to the 31st Valley City State Viking Hall of Fame. This is an awesome achievement. It's great to see so many people here tonight. And I'm wondering as we think about the previous 30 years, if you would stand up if you've attended all 30. I have two people in mind, I think, that might have been here for all 30. Al Olson, Larry Robinson, Dave Bassmiss too. We're gonna have to re-vote on that Hall of Fame. Bob King, while we know Bob, he, this could be the Bob King Hall of Fame banquet. That's who I was thinking was Bob and Larry. Awesome, great to have you all here. Um, it's great to be back in Valley City, as you know, as many of you maybe know that I was sentenced to a 10-year term in Jamestown for winning the paint bucket too many times. And in the course of time, I've, I've ran into some students over there and, and have heard some interesting stories. And there was a student who wore an orange clad letterman's jacket representing their school all around. And, and the student was always really upset about how they were perceived because of this jacket that they were wearing. So he decided to do a different social psychology type experiment and wear a cardinal jacket to see if he would be treated differently. So he puts his jacket on and he's driving out into the country and he comes across this farm and he sees all of these sheep and he's like, wow, that is awesome. Look at all of these sheep. So he pulls into the yard and he talks to the farmer and he says, I'm amazed by all these sheep that you have here. And he goes, if I guess how many you have here, can I have one? Well, the, the farmer was kind of a gambling guy as most farmers are. If you're gonna be in that occupation, he says, sure, go ahead. So the guy looks around, he says, 257. The farmer says, well, how? He goes, you are correct. He goes, it, you know what, I'm a man of my word. Uh, feel free to pick one out of the flock. So excited as can be, the young man goes out, picks a sheep out of the flock and loads it up and he's on his way out. The farmer stops him and he said, okay, he goes, quite frankly, he goes, if I can tell you the color of the sweatshirt you should be wearing, can I have my dog back? <laughs> Anyway, uh, tonight we're going to recognize individuals whose, whose work resulted, obviously, in them being here and the records that they set. But first, I think it's appropriate to bring to the stage the current record holder who consistently breaks her own enrollment record year after year, the captain of the Viking ship, Dr. Tisa Mason. Thank you so much, but I have to make a correction because it's not me that breaks the record. It is the quality education that our faculty deliver and the student services that all of our staff deliver every single day. And I know everyone here recognizes that and we're really proud of our new record of 1,522 students. the university and the university experience, you can't talk about that without really talking about how strong our student athletic program is and how incredibly proud we are of the program of our students and our coaches and all of the staff that work hard to deliver excellent experiences. And we really look to our student athletes to help tell part of our institutional stories. And they do that in so many ways by how they practice and play their character on the field and off the field, and their success in the classroom and in the boardroom. So when you think about it as a society, when we really need inspiration to elevate us, by and large, what do we do? We turn to athletes because they represent for us grit and determination, perseverance, and triumph over 
adversity. And I know there are so many stories here tonight. Those qualities and those characteristics are easily attributed to our beloved VCSU. And so tonight, I arrive here on the edge of my seat to hear your stories and to celebrate you this evening. I'm so excited. So right now, I'd like to pause a second and ask all of the past recipients of the Hall of Fame to please stand and be recognized. And now, this evening, recipients, please stand to be recognized. And to their families, their friends that came tonight, their coaches and their mentors, we know that you're very proud of them and that this is your evening too. So have a great evening as we celebrate more success from the VCSU tradition. Thank you, Dr. Mason. Uh, we also have an opportunity tonight to introduce a veteran Viking into a new role. In August, Jill DeVries was named the new athletic director at Valley City State University. Jill, Jill transitions her 17 years of accomplished values of academic and athletic excellence on the court to the helm of the athletic department. Would you please help me welcome BCSU's new athletic director, Jill DeVries. think it's for them. <laughs> they do. They think it's about the dance that we have Wednesday night and tomorrow night, right? And they think it's about carameled apples, you know, in the student center. But homecoming is for you, right? The alumni. Uh, and the Hall of Fame, of course, celebrates the Vikings' very best. And so congratulations to all of you who are being inducted tonight, the individuals and the teams. Uh, what a fun night to be a part of, right? What a fun night to be a part of. Uh, it's especially fun for me because, you know, for the, this is one of the very first, obviously the first time I've been in this role as the athletic director, but it's also one of the very first classes uh, of being inducted in the Hall of Fame where I actually got to see you guys play, right? 2000, that was my first or second year here, 2001. So most of you, sorry Kelly, <laughs> Most of you were student athletes and I got to see you in a Viking uniform. So I can actually tell the story. Um, you know, I'm not sure what is a better story. I, I, I think about, you know, Jeremy scrambling and kind of being snake-like, right? And getting away from the defense and sort of just heaving it up there, knowing, knowing that Steve was going to catch it or hoping that Steve was going to catch it. I'm not sure. <laughs> Knowing or hoping? Knowing, yes. And, and you know, I remember Ben Arstead being a fantastic hitter, but maybe Cheryl was a better hitter. You know, kind of depends on who you ask. Kind of depends on who you ask. Um, and, and of course, you know, Dave. Dave, Dave is an institution in and of himself here at Valley City State. He, he, he has touched, you know, literally all of the inductees tonight, the, the football players who helped coach them, uh, the student athletes on our campus today, and, and obviously we hope the student athletes of the future, right Dave? He's not, he's not retiring yet. He, he has been a part of their success, and hopefully we have been a part of his success. And, uh, you know, I read today that, that, that uh, actually uh, brevity is the soul of wit, so I'd like to keep it short. So I do need to say some thank yous, however, okay, before we eat. I'd like to thank Kim and, 
and Lori for putting this together. Thank you, Kim. We should give her a round of applause. Um, I would like to thank, to thank the, uh, Carrie's not here, so, you know, again, I'd like to thank Mark Potts. Mark, I, I, literally, I, I'm not, the hardest working man in the athletic department is probably Mark Potts. You know, all day, every day, when we have an emergency, he is the guy. So thank you, Mark. You put together the video. You put together the, the program tonight. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I, I would like to thank our presenters, Diane Burr, Greg Horner, Dennis McCulloch, and Corey Anderson, of course, for, for helping us to put the video together and for being our presenters tonight. So, and I'd also like to thank our Letter Winners Club, and uh, those are the people who actually pick our Hall of Fame inductees, so if they would stand, please, I would appreciate that. I think most of you are here. Our Letter Winners Club, thank you. Uh, and, and my final thank you um, is to the people that I have an opportunity to work with every single day, our current coaching staff. So if you would please stand and be recognized, I think they do a great job of continuing the tradition of success at BCSU. Congratulations once again, 2017 class, and uh, have a fantastic weekend. Please bow your head as we pray. Please accept our humble thanks, dear Lord, for bringing us together this evening in a true bond of fellowship. Daily living is like being on a giant stage, and in the brief drama of life, everyone must select a role to play. The character is left for each to choose. Thank you, Lord, for Valley City State University and the people who have given so much to make it, make it successful. Each day is a gift, so let us focus on all the happy memories we have stored away. Help us use this time together and this food to strengthen us to meet the challenges that will make this a more just and decent world for all. And in your name we pray, amen. Thank you, thank you. Another reason we're all here tonight, to celebrate, honor, and reflect on a group of Vikings who have notched their place in Viking lore. Our first inductee this evening is Cheryl Kotzik Bjorndahl. Cheryl will be presented into the Hall of Fame by Diane Burr. And we're going to go to the front and Mark Potts, all the work he's done this week, you ready? starred on the volleyball court for four seasons at Valley City State University, earning all conference honors each of her four seasons. Cheryl was a true all-around player for the Vikings and currently ranks fourth all-time in school history with more than 1,400 career kills and also ranks second all-time with almost 1,800 digs. No player during that era worked harder at improving her game. She spent countless hours working to be the best she could be. From the start of her career, Cheryl was something special. As she was named the conference's freshman of the year, she followed that up with first team all conference honors as a sophomore, junior, and senior. Her career was capped with the conference's most valuable graduating senior award in 2002. Cheryl was also a member of the VCSU track team competing in the throwing events. Congratulations on a great career, Cheryl. Welcome to the Viking Hall of Fame.
first I want to congratulate all the inductees tonight. Uh, what an awesome honor we are all awarded with tonight. I'd like to thank Valley City State and the alumni also for this honor and all the memories that we can all cherish that we uh, made during our time here. I'd like to thank my family. Um, without them and their support, I could have never achieved anything that I have achieved. Um, all my coaches and teammates, I'd like to thank them. Without them and their support and all of the things that they have taught me, I would have also never made it here. Um, and I will never forget the times in Gratian Gym, um, the dig or die, the teamwork, working together, the couch potato. Um, those of you who were there, a couch in Gratian Gym where you got to sit and uh, eat a pizza and pop if you got your ticket full, and all the support that uh, all the Valley City fans have ever given. So thank you very much, what an honor. Congratulations, Cheryl. Our next inductee this evening is Kelly Gertzheiser. Kelly will be presented into the Hall of Fame by Diane Burr. Kelly Gertz thrived in two sports during her biking career, earning all conference honors in both volleyball and softball in the mid 90s. Kelly joined the Viking family as a junior college transfer in 1995 and made an immediate impact on the volleyball court as an all-conference setting. As a senior, Kelly helped the Vikings to a 33-8 overall record, an 11-1 conference record, and a regular season conference championship. She was named all-conference and first-team all-great plains along with earning all-region honors. Kelly's great skills were elevated by her ability to see the opponent's court. Her intuitive ability to run an offense was second to none. She made good hitters better, and she made great hitters unstoppable. Despite playing just two seasons, Kelly ranks third all-time in Viking history with 2,660 career assists. On the softball field, Kelly was also an impact player. Conference coaches acknowledged that ability by naming Kelly to both the all-conference and all-section teams after her junior season in 1996. Congratulations, Kelly. Welcome to the Viking Hall of Fame. I had many talented players, however, throughout the course of my career. 
In high school, I was very fortunate to set for not only one, but two Division I setter, or hit, outside hitters, which made me the setter that I was here. I'd like to thank my family, but especially my sister Jackie, who is not, unfortunately not here tonight. She kept me on the straight and narrow and encouraged me to play in college. There are very many more people that I would like to thank tonight, but I'll keep it a little bit short because there's many more inductees tonight. As an athlete over the years, I learned a lot of valuable skills, on and off the court, really. On the court, as a setter, I learned how to be a leader and direct the offense. Today, in my current job in the North Dakota University system, I lead a team who I count on day in and day out. I direct them, I direct the work, so thank you to volleyball and softball so I could learn a lot of those traits. I learned to trust in my teammates. I threw the ball up there and they were able to get it down. Today I count on my team and they get the work done day in and day out. Off the court, I learned that family is more than a traditional idea of parents, siblings, and cousins. Valley City State taught me that family is also the friends that you meet, the professors who taught me and guided me along the way, and the teammates and coaches that hung with you through the highs and lows. I have a lot of great memories here at Valley City State. A lot of stories that I'd like to tell, but some are appropriate and some are not. <laughs> we had a lot of road trips. Diane took us far, especially on homecoming weekend. She did not want us to be here. <laughs> that was a smart move. Um, I will say that the road trips that we went on probably were my most favorite memories. We had a lot of fun. Casey is here tonight. She remembers a lot of the songs that we that we came up with. A lot of new words to a lot of old tunes that we may share later. Um, but really the time that we had together on the road really made us closer and stronger, which made our team even better. My first year, my first year here playing at Valley City State, I was coming off an ACL injury, and Diane took faith in me, and she started me. I can't thank her enough. However, she made me wear my knee brace, and I really didn't like it much. Even though my doctors cleared me to play without it, she would not let me play without it. She was so paranoid that I remember one trip that we were taking, and I don't remember where it was to, but I honestly forgot my knee brace at my apartment. We were practically out of town and she turned that people mover around so fast, drove me straight to my apartment and got my knee brace. Seriously, Dan, I don't know. <laughs> I really did forget it on accident. You may still not believe me, but I really did. But thank you for not making me wear it my senior year. It was such a drag. I'll end with this quote. Even when you play the game of your life, it's the feeling of teamwork that you'll remember. You'll forget the plays, the shots, and the scores, but you'll never forget your teammates. This is a quote by Deborah Miller Palmer. As I stand here tonight and accept this honor, it isn't about the, the plays that we ran, the final scores, or the stats. It's about the life lessons I learned here at Valley State University and the teammates I had the pleasure of experiencing it with. Go Vikings. Congratulations, Kelly. Our next inductee is Ben Arstead. Unfortunately, Ben cannot be with us tonight due to some other commitments in his professional life. Uh, Brent, his father, will be accepting Ben's award tonight on his behalf. Ben will be presented into the Hall of Fame by his defensive coordinator, Mr. Greg Warner. Ben Arsenault didn't always look the part of an intimidating linebacker, but he was one of the best. He was selected first team all conference three times during his Viking football career from 1998 to 2001. Ben was one of the best linebackers to ever come through in CSU. He wasn't very fast, and he was just solid in the weight room, but man, could Ben make plays. 
He would read offenses better than anybody I've ever coached and knew our opponents inside and out. Ben was named team defensive MVP his final three seasons, along with earning first team all conference those seasons and second team all American as a senior. Over those three years, he was one of the anchors that led us to back to back playoff appearances in the conference championship in 2000. We posted a 25 and 6 record over Ben's final three seasons. As a junior and senior, Ben recorded 235 tackles and 11 sacks, forced five fumbles, and intercepted three passes. He finished his career as the school's all time leading tackler and now currently ranks fourth all time with 328 career tackles. Congratulations on a great career, Ben. Welcome to the Viking Hall of Fame. Thank you, Brent. Make sure you give Ben our best. Um, I can tell you, as the offensive coordinator in practice in inside Hall, which was a period where we would practice our run game against the defense, the offensive lineman in this room would agree with me, it really stunk to go against Ben Arstead. It was not much fun. In fact, we would go in and probably tear up everything that we were doing that week because we couldn't run it against him. And, and I think part of what we did every day in practice is let's see if we can get our stead today. If we can get him once, we felt really good about it. The next two gentlemen, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to present. And they are just part of a, a obviously special group of individuals. And it is not often in your coaching tenure you get the opportunity to coach greatness all the time, and especially for a couple of years, but those were certainly years with that team. And before I bring Steve up here, I will bring one thing into the fold. We were good, and sometimes we knew it, sometimes we didn't play to our potential. And I remember a halftime talk where I probably wasn't ever very animated, but I tipped the table in the classroom which was really not like me, but it was really not like our team, or punch things, Walt. Um, and I said, is there anybody in this room, honestly, that doesn't know the game plan? If you don't know the game plan, please stand up. Mark Rarick, self-proclaimed smartest man in the world, stands up. I go, Mark, honestly, really, you don't know the game plan. And he says, no, coach, actually I do. He goes, I just didn't want you to be the only person standing up. <laughs> With that, our next inductee this evening, Mr. Steve Battle. Kick goes to Steve Battle at the three. 
three. Battle sets up, it'll return. Break foot! He's done! To the midfield, strike 40! 35, 30! Nobody will get him to the five! Touchdown, Valley City State! Steve Battle arrived at Valley City State as a raw athlete and began his high school playing days late in his time at Cocoa Beach. After overcoming an inconsistent start to his college career, Steve left the BCSU campus as the most prolific receiver in Viking history. Steve changed the dynamic of the flanker position at Valley City State. Up to that point, we seldom had receivers who possessed his diverse skill set. Steve had that shake or make you miss ability as the first guy never tackled him. He was a threat to score every time he touched the ball, no matter where we were on the field or what the situation was. In fact, he scored more touchdowns in his Viking career than anyone in the 109 years of Viking football. Simply put, Steve was a game changer. He was a type of player that few teams had and a player who allowed us to beat teams simply because of his skill. Steve burst onto the scene as a sophomore with 18 touchdowns during the 2000 season, including four on kick returns. He was named second team All-American and first team All-Conference. He repeated those same honors as a junior and then was named the conference's most valuable graduating senior in 2002. Of his school record 55 touchdowns, 48 came through the air and six came by way of kick returns. Steve was truly a dynamic player and was honored three times as an All-American. Steve holds several school records, including the single game receiving record and school records for receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Steve's career was also defined by team success, as the Vikings compiled a 32-9 career record and two playoff appearances. Congratulations, Steve, and welcome to the Viking Hall of Fame. Uh, 
great quarterback. We had a great time together. Loved it. All right, we just go there, man. Just throw me the ball. All right, God, I got you. <laughs> I'm open, man. I was just like, man, I don't care who I am. Just throw the ball. Uh, and he would be like, I got you. You know, and he, I would love it because, you know, most players, if you ever see it, they got those signals and everything. I just look at Pesci. And he already knew. So uh, I had a great time playing with Pesci. He was a great quarterback. But he also would put me in my place, too. He would like, if I dropped the ball, he would let me know. Man, I only had one hand on it. You still should have caught it. <laughs> so, um, but I appreciate uh, everyone uh, for this prestigious reward. I told everybody I won't be long. Uh, but thank you, everyone. My family's here. Love everyone. My friends, my roommates. Uh, can't tell the stories, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I had a great time here. Um, this has been one of the best feelings of my a kid from Cocoa, Florida. Guys, I don't know if anybody knows my story. I played one year of high school football. I was a basketball player. My dad to this day will tell you right now, he's like, I never knew you liked football. He I mean, said he was going to pay for school. So I was like, yeah, play basketball or football. And so I ended up, you know, great coaching system, great system here at Valley City. Uh, loved everybody here, man. I love my time here. Had great stories, great times. Probably some good families. Everybody, I'm sorry. I was bad back in the days. We're on now. Love you all now. Please forgive me. But thank you again, guys. Thank you, Steve, and thanks for those memories. It's good to see those things again. Uh, I think Coach Mack, Coach Arnold would agree, man, we were all a lot better coaches when you have guys like that. The next gentleman, um, I think I'm just gonna let the video speak for itself. I could say a lot of superlatives about him and how I feel about his abilities and, and him as an individual. Um, it was a once in a lifetime treat to get the opportunity to coach this young man. Our next inductee this evening from Wapiton, North Dakota, Mr. Jeremy Peschel. in Valley City State history is long, including three who currently reside in the Viking Hall of Fame. But any discussion about the best quarterback to ever play at BCSU, in my opinion, starts and stops with Jeremy Pesher. A four-year starter at quarterback, Jeremy helped take the Vikings from an 0-10 season his freshman year to completing a feat no other quarterback in school history has accomplished back-to-back -back playoff appearances by his junior and senior seasons. The Vikings posted a 25-6 record during JP's final three seasons, and he ended his career as the school's all-time leader in several categories, including passing yards, passing touchdowns, and total offensive yards and touchdowns. Jeremy was named first-team all-conference and conference MVP in both his junior and senior seasons. He was also honorable mention All-American during his senior season. Jeremy possessed a playground knack for keeping plays alive with those eyes in the back of his head. His ability to scramble and run when the opportunity presented itself kept many touchdown drives alive. Jeremy was a coach on the field and many times finishing plays and correcting them before they left the coordinator's mouth. The moment was never too big for Jeremy, ever. He was humble, a quarterback without ego, he was a gamer. Outside of football, Jeremy was also a four-year starter at shortstop for the Viking baseball team, where you could find him positioned in the center of the diamond and in the heart of the batting order. During his time, the Vikings averaged over 20 wins a season, setting the record for most wins in BCSU history at that time. He earned all-conference honors while being named MVP his senior season. JP became the first Viking baseball player who's played within the last 30 years to be inducted into the Viking Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Jeremy. Welcome to the Viking Hall of Fame.
thank you uh, to Valley State State <coughs> for everything you've given me and my family um, for literally the last 20 years. Uh, it, it's a, truly an honor to be an athlete here. Um, now that you do for me professionally, it, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, congratulations to all the other um, individuals that went in tonight. Um, uh, Corey and I talked about this a few months back. And, I think it's really great the way they're doing this to this year with you know, Steve and Ben going in and uh, the 2000 and 2001 teams. Um, <laughs> this is blatant. Um, a lot of people I'd like to you know, say thank you to, uh, starting with my teammates, of course. Uh, no question, you know, Steve and all his greatness. Uh, I wouldn't be up here without him, no question. And I remember uh, when my senior season, or junior season it was, and we were, I was talking to a new uh, TV reporter, and they were, you know, a lot of the focus was on me. But like I told them that year, and we had 20 guys with 20 catches. I mean, I'm just running around throwing the football, but there's just athletes everywhere. And that makes things a lot easier, no question about it. Um, so thank you to my teammates. Um, and thank you to my family. Thank you for making it out tonight and supporting me always. Thank you to the coaching staff for the question. Um, they didn't like Steve talk about it. His freshman year, maybe we didn't go great. But mine was, we were on 10. So <laughs> thank you for everyone who stayed. Um, not a lot of quarterbacks get to play after going 0 and 10. Let's be honest, I wasn't very good. Uh, and, and, and Coach Mack and Coach Horner and and Corey stuck with me, and to be honest, like, they let me do it my way. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't just you know, get the play and run it and one, two, three throw. It's, I, I didn't play that way. And, and again, not everyone's going to stick with you when, when things aren't going great, and they did. Um, I'll never forget that. I, I, I remember when Corey retired, telling a story. It's a, it's a baseball story, but um, my senior year, I pitched, and I think we were playing. It was Huron. And I started game two, and I, we were ahead maybe 10 to three, or let's just call it 10 to three, and, and I wanted to go back out for the seven. Uh, and he let me in, probably gave up five or six, and next thing you know, he came out, he has, took his first visit, and, and I said, get it together, let's get out of here. And uh, I didn't. A couple more guys tell me this, and, and here comes Corey again, and I kind of just, I just asked him, I said, hey, I got this far, let me finish it. We got two outs in the seventh, and he did it. He let me, he let me finish it. Well, the next pitch I threw, I was pretty sure the ball was going to be hit over the center field fence, and it was a rocket. Um, and, and our center fielder, John Sheldon, ran it down, got out of the game, and, and Corey stuck with me. And I remember later that same season, uh, similar situation, I'm pitching against the University of Mary, and we were ahead. 14 and 9 or 14 to 10. Why are there so many runs every time they pitch? I don't know. Um, but it was the same situation. And, you know, we scored a few runs to get that lead. And Corey said, well, I suppose you want to go back out there and finish this. And I said, yeah, I do. Uh, it didn't work out that time, right? I maybe mean, got one out and he had to come get me. But uh, that was just the kind of coach he was. You know, he, he believed in his guys. If you were Corey's guy, you were Corey's guy. Uh, and he was going to stick with himself. Much appreciated. I just there's no way I'd be up here without you. No question about it. Um, so thank you, uh, teammates. I look, just look forward to catching up with you guys. For some of us, it's been a long time. So I look forward to catching up over the weekend and just making some more memories. So thank you. Congratulations, Jeremy. Uh, it's good to see uh, Coach Dorfler here tonight, right? Coach Dorfler, where are you at? Hey, awesome, good to see you here. Uh, we want to shout out to all those offensive linemen that you had in that 2000 season. And, and one of the most favorite things that I think I had my favorite sports team ever was uh, the bowling team that he put together up at Sky Lanes and uh, they would go up there and compete during the week and, and their name was the best ever. It was like, I can't believe it's not Gutter. That was a Lenny original. The next two teams, 
that will be inducted into the Valley City State Hall of Fame this year are the 2000 and 2001 football teams. Back-to-back -back national playoff participants. They will be presented into the Hall of Fame by head football coach Dennis McCulloch. championship and a national playoff appearance. The hard work and improvement they showed speaks loudly about the character of that group. Things weren't always easy in 2000. We were still learning how to win, and we dropped a heartbreaking 13-12 game at Minot State early in the season. From there, we reeled off eight straight wins, including come-from-behind victories against Dickinson State, South Dakota School of Mines, and regular season finale against the University of Mary, which won us a share of the conference championship. The 2000 season was the first and only time that we posted the playoff game dropping a 24-21 first round game in the Farmer Room to Carroll College. We finished the year with a DAC championship and a 92 overall record. We returned many of the same guys in 2001 and came in with high expectations and a swagger about us. Kick goes to Steve, battle at the three. Battle sets up in a return. Price one, he's dead! To the midfield, strike 40, 35, 30. Nobody will get him to the five touchdown. Out of the shotgun, Petzl drops back. He's going to step up, throws to the end zone, touchdown. Touchdown for J.O. Neal. Miller hit it from behind, he goes down. Brett Miller, another quarterback sack. Johnson going left side, big hole. Into the secondary, to the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Right down with a penalty marker coming up. Vikings showing a blitz here. They come with seven. Oh, oh that is a full starring hit. Those expectations were met early as we dominated and rolled in nine straight wins, including three straight shutouts to start the season. Our guys allowed just 21 points through the first six games, outscoring their opponents 205 to 21 as we separated ourselves from the conference. We ended the season with a 9-2 overall record, losing at Carroll College in the first round of the playoffs. As we look back now, we realize that some of the best players in Viking history played on these teams, and it is truly a special time to be a Viking. Thanks for the memory, guys. Congratulations on your accomplishments, and welcome to the Viking Hall of Fame. Accepting this award on behalf of the 2000 and 2001 teams is head coach Dennis McCulloch and Mark Rare. I don't know if I'm the right person to be up here for these teams, but there's some general concern that if I'm not up here, it'd be praying, so. <laughs> I think I hold uh, a little unique place um, just, just in the way that, that I've bridged uh, 96 to 2000. Um, I see some of my 96 teammates in the back, and, and, and I had the privilege of coming in as a red shirt in 96. Um, and just getting my head beat in on the scout team all year long, all those guys won the conference title. Um, and I was there in 97 when Coach Mack became the head coach, and our program immediately went downhill. <laughs> Uh, with a lot of new faces, uh, a lot of new faces in the game, second year head coach in 98. And, and, uh, the guys before me talk about it, but um, we, we were not a good football team in 98. Um, we, we were only 10 and it was not close on 10. It was, uh, it was a long fall. 
Let's talk about a lot of us stuck around. Uh, a lot of us got in doubt. A lot of blue collar guys, thank God we had battle, because without battle, there wasn't an athlete among us. Uh, but we worked hard. Uh, we stuck together, and in 2000, we'll start boxing. And uh, I think I speak on behalf of all my teammates here. That it was a good time, boys. We had a lot of fun. So um, it's fun to represent the university. Uh, we enjoy being here, and we thank all of you for being here tonight. Thank you. I appreciate everybody else being short, so Coach Mack can talk a lot. Coach Horn is timing me. There's a couple of things he's timing me on, is how long I'm going to talk and how long it takes me before I cry. So, uh, first of all, you know, I just want the 2000 team to please stand up and be recognized. If you were on the 2000 team, please stand up and be recognized. The other thing is, you know, I, I, as, as most of you guys can sense, I, I stand here as the head coach and, and feel very blessed to have the people that I've been around and coached with uh, that have made my job a lot easier. And I, I, you know, I feel like the great orchestra leader. That's, that's really what I've done because everybody knows I'm a figurehead. I don't, you know, I don't do a whole lot at the office. Uh, check in with Horner, see how those guys are doing. But, but those guys, those guys have run the show, and Coach Mack does a great job of, of leading the orchestra. Uh, but I, I, I would be nowhere without my coaching staff, the people who've been with me and committed their lives. So, Horner, you won two minutes. <laughs> so. I just, I, I just, I'm going to take a minute just to introduce those guys, and I would like those guys to stand up. And first of all, I mean, Coach Horner's been here 24 years with me. And he is totally responsible for that over 10 years. So, he uh, takes, takes credit for that. Uh, Dave Roush, uh, Coach Ruth. He's been, a, he's been an awesome, awesome addition and, and unbelievable what he's done for me. The true, uh, when you talk about biting pride, Coach Roush is it. And, and I, can't, I can't say enough of what he's done for me in this program. So, and the people he's touched and been around. So, thank you, Coach Roush, for all you've done. Corey Anderson, uh, Corey was our office coordinator. Phenomenal man. So when Corey was here, Corey, all he did was assistant football, uh, head baseball, uh, was our admission and enrollment service guy, and SID. You know, he had hardly anything to do. Uh, you know, he couldn't get him to come over to the office until like one or so. Uh, but. Corey's an amazing guy, amazing what he did for this university, his love and his passion, it's never left. Uh, truly appreciate everything he's done for me. Deeper. All right. <laughs> but Coach Warner and I were both saying 13 years of working with somebody. Special, awesome, tough when he left the office. Thanks, Corey. And then the savior of our program, Lenny Dorfler, who came after the 0 10 year, uh, 1999. In 2000, uh, coach got the program turned around. Lenny was an awesome addition and coached our offensive line. Greatly appreciate you, Lenny, and helping us change the program. Uh, Nat Hill, who spent nine years, was our offensive line coach. Nat came in the following year. Had to live under the shadow of Lenny, but, but thank you for your passion and love for Viking football and what you done, did for us. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, coach Kramer is here, who now president of our offensive line coach. Uh, he's been there here for our last five years. Thank you, Coach Kramer. All the wins and losses that I've, again, uh, it's about the people. I'm standing here today because Don Bauer trusted me. You guys can blame me. 
But I'm here today because Don Baller trusted me. Uh, you know, I don't get very many op opportunities to thank him, so I must thank him publicly today. You know, we win a conference championship, Coach Grand resign. Uh, to, to trust a young guy to take over a program is not easy, but Don had faith and, and trust in me. Uh, and it was not an easy start, as we know, 5-5, five and 0-10. Five, oh Don had some great uh, recommendations uh, to me that helped me make me better after over 10 years. And Mac, you can't do that again. Now, uh, so the next year we scheduled nine games. So we, we, we were able to do that. But thank Don. I'm telling him thank you very much for all you did. Um, and, and, and for you with, with what you've done for me and the trust. I appreciate it. Um, I was very, very blessed. I had great people, uh, great individual people. And, and, and we were successful here because of the group of people we gathered together and all the work that went into getting those guys. I had a great team. Um, you guys got a sense of these guys and the, and the talent they have, but also the people they are. Uh, we were successful because people bought in and believed uh, not only in me, but each other. Uh, you were in 10, you got a lot of people to jump in the ship and leave. And there was a lot of bad things, there was a lot of dark moments that year. And Steve touched on this poor young man passed away. <clears throat> Tough times, bonded kids, but out of, the, out of that, out of the fire, out of the, those things came a really bonded team. The guys who stayed were committed. We had no weak links. We had no guys who, who were about themselves. It was about a greater good. <clears throat> Steve, you know, Steve talked about it. You know, after the year, I, I had lots of guys, hey, Coach Mack, I'm leaving. I got to get out of here, whatever. You, you have lots of guys. Steve's a very talented guy. He, he could have went anywhere to play. And, and Steve walked in my office and said, Mac, I'm, you know, I'm solid. I'm, I'm committed to this program. I'm committed to you. I meant a lot. It really helped. So, again, talented guys, good guys, good people. That's what this team was about. And, and I, again, we, we, you guys saved my job. You saved who I am today. So, we had a great team. 2000 was a team that had a lot of close games. We had a lot of question marks. We battled through a lot of stuff. Uh, we lost 13 to 12 to a tough Minot State team. Uh, I, I told Justin I was going to mention it uh, after that game. But those guys went in that locker room and they looked at each other and they talked about this is going to happen again, right? They had confidence, even though in a loss, they were they were bought in and they knew what they were, they had the opportunities to do. It was a, a great experience. Uh, that. You know, the, it was an unbelievable experience. That loss was tough, but afterwards, and the feeling in the locker room was unbelievable. The, the win against Mary at home was the most, it was the greatest win I've experienced here. The, you know, just because you won a college championship, it was the University of Mary, who we have not beaten very often. Um, the, the big dog in the, in, the, in the conference, it was an unbelievable experience, an unbelievable win. Ronnie Lee, I don't know if that Ronnie Lee's here, but uh, uh, him playing the, the uh, uh, we are the champions at the end of the game. Black Hole might be brave forever. Uh, that was unbelievable. Uh, we, we came back off of that year, and we had a great, unbelievable team. Our 2001 team, we knew we had great confidence. We had lots of guys back. I told us those guys in, in the spring, I said, you know what, man, you don't have to do anything right now. We'll, we'll, we're going to win a lot of games if you don't do anything. Because you're very talented. We have a very talented group. But if you go work hard and do the things uh, that you need to do, we can be very special. And, and when you when you look at it, and, and I'm a defensive guy, but when you go through six games, and we allow 3.2 points per game, you're going to win a lot of games. And then our offense scoring at 35 points average a game in those first six games is unbelievable. Uh, we were a dominant team, and, and it was a great team to coach because we knew we had that confidence, that swagger when we went out. Um, and those are, it was a special group of guys. Um, it was extremely disappointing at our, our last game against the University of Mary. Mark Fox like, what the heck happened? You guys lost big, I, you know, I think it's coaching. It had to be coaching in the last game. I was going to mention it's Brent Miller, but I am not going to say that. I am not. I told, I, I will not bring in Brent Miller's name. And I did not mention Mark Rarick's name in the Minot game, did I? I did not say anything about it. I, I told Corey I'm not bringing those things up. I'm not going to bring up in the over 10 year about Peschel the first game either. I'm not going to say one word about it. So you guys can ask those questions later. Uh, guys, I I was truly blessed to coach, coach 
a team like these guys. Great people, buying guys, we love you. Couldn't ask for more. Coach Horton and I, Coach Ruth, the coaches and our staff, we appreciate what you guys did. You listened, you bought in, you did the crazy things we asked you to do. Not always perfect, but you bought in. The other thing you're going to see about this group, families were huge. Families got into every game. Mr. Arstead talked about it, right? I, I, I'm not going to start talking about names because I'm, I'm going to miss a family. But I'm telling you how many families came to every game. It was like that was their deal. Uh, and they bought in and they were a big, huge part of this group of people. And I can't thank you guys enough for your support, all the families. So thank you again. Go Vikes. Okay, 2001, please stand up. 2001, please stand up. Thursday put in, right? We know how much you like that. Uh, as we know, Mac has uh, assumed the all-time victory leader in Valley City State history. That's a great honor. The 24 years with Coach Horner is even more amazing. And I asked those guys at the start of the season, how do you guys, you know, how do you do it? And Horner was really quick to step up and tell me how it was going to happen. Okay, is how he would say. Um, we just came into agreement 24 years ago when we started coaching that I was going to be involved in all the minor decisions and Coach Mack was going to be involved in all the major decisions. And 24 years later, we haven't had to make a major decision. So it's really easy. Last but not least, our next inductee this evening is Dave Bass. I want to take I want to take a moment tonight to also share that Dave will be recognized by the NAI this April as he receives the Wally Schwartz Award as the best FAR in the nation. I was thinking about it today on the way over, and if there is any doubt, if VCSU had our own Mount Rushmore, I would see Bill Osman, I would see Coach Dew, and I would see Dave Bass. Now, there can be battles for the fourth spot, but I think Dave Bass is definitely on VCSU's Mount Rushmore. Dave is such a humble person, and I know that you know him as well as I do. This is not probably going to be the easiest thing for him to accept this award. But as I want to say to Dave, this isn't an award as much as it's a reward from all of us for what you have done since you started at Valley City State and what you will continue to do. And it's awesome to have had the opportunity to have a stable, person at Valley City State for 30 years that we can all count on, and you have treated everyone in this room like they're Hall of Famers, whether they were or not, and we thank you for that. Presenting Dave into the Hall of Fame, former Viking from the past, Steve Fike. No one who 
who better embodies the term Viking pride than Dave Bass. Dave is being inducted into the Viking Hall of Fame for his 10 years as head track and field and cross country coach, and for more than 20 years as the school's faculty athletic representative. But it is his contributions to BCSU that go beyond that. He is an advocate for Viking athletics, a confidant for student athletes, a proud supporter of our students in good times and bad. Dave simply lives and breathes BCSU and Viking athletics. He makes himself available to coaches and student athletes at all hours, and does his best to share the BCSU story with almost any recruit who visits campus. As head cross country coach, Dave led his Vikings teams to conference championships and the NAIA national meet in both 1981 and 1986. Two of his cross country athletes earned all American honors he was named the NEIA District 12 Coach of the Year four times in cross country. As head track and field coach, Dave saw 12 of his athletes place at the NEIA National Meet, including the national champion in the marathon. Twice, Dave was named the District 12 Coach of the Year. Dave was also an assistant football coach for the 1983 and 84 Conference Championship football teams. Even to this day, more than 30 years removed from his role as assistant football coach. Dave is still there on the sidelines of every game, encouraging, cheering, and supporting our student athletes. And that, perhaps, is the true story of Dave Bass. Coach, supporter, and diehard DCSU fan. But most importantly, a living, breathing example of Viking pride. On a more personal note, Coach, it was a wonderful experience running for you and for Valley City State University. You made every day enjoyable, even the days you worked us like dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a personal honor for me to present to you for induction into the 2017 Viking Hall of Fame, Mr. David Bass. crying is 38 seconds. Um, Mac and Jill came up with that time. They came up with it because I've seen them cry a lot, they've seen me cry a lot, so we decided on 38 seconds. And so what I'm going to do is just talk about the 38 seconds because I'm not going to cry while I do that. And Ava's sitting over there with her phone going and she's got the stopwatch running and she's going to signal me when the 38 seconds is up. And then I'll get into my talk, so we're just going to go like this. And while I'm doing that, Don Bauer, I gotta tell you, somebody offered me $500 today. And, and you and I have talked about money in the past, and they offered me $500 if I will make this 45 minutes long because they want to see what you would do if I talk for 45 minutes. You all know if you know Bauer, he's got patience like Joel. You just know that he's got patience like Joel. I love you, guy. I want you to know I love you. Cheryl, what a great athlete. What a great, I mean, what a great athlete. I can still hear the sound of that volleyball coming off your hand. It, it just like, and we had so many good hitters. Diane had so many good volleyball teams. And I can still just remember what it sounded like when that ball came off your hand. And I always believe that if you had chosen basketball, or if you had chosen golf, and I know you were involved in track, but whatever sport you would have chosen, You'd have been a great athlete in that sport. Kelly, I remember the smile. I, I remember you played so much with a smile and just a, one of those fierce competitors. And to be all conference in two sports and come here and do what you did in two years and the way you represented Valley City State, it was just an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Um, ben Arstead, uh, and, and, and I hope that Ben someday is going to watch the video because I know there was a lot of uh, a lot of fun back and forth between Luke and Ben when Ben was, was challenging that rear tackle mark. And they were both from West Fargo. And, and I thought they had such a great, great relationship between Ben and between, between Luke. Um, 
But I, I also want to say one thing about Ben. I had an opportunity to attend the West Fargo High School Hall of Fame banquet two weeks ago. And I sat at a table with Jim Jonas and Tim Scully, who are longtime West Fargo coaches. And, and I, I do hope that Ben will get this, but I hope you're going to share with him also. They were well, well aware that Ben is going into the Valley State, State Hall of Fame and they asked me to make sure that he was acknowledged because of the accomplishments that he had here. Ben was a great football player, a great teammate, a great leader. Steve Battle promised me, you promised man, you said I'm as good once as I ever was. It's been a long time since we've taken a kick, taken a kick off to the house. And I told him or asked him today, if you, if you catch that ball on the four yard line, can you make it 96 yards to the end zone? And he said, if you've got oxygen down at the other end, I can do it. Um, so you're on. And, and I do eligibility. So we did the paperwork this afternoon. We decided between Mac and I that number 83 is available. I know that's different than nine, but number 83 is available. So we'll find a helmet, we'll find shoulder pads, we'll get you into gear. One time, man, you're taking it back. Coy did a great job, Ash. Coy did a great job when he introduced you tonight. Um, two weeks ago, Corey and I were at a baseball game in Jamestown. And, and we were talking about quarterbacks. And I told Corey, the, and, and I know Bob King, and I, and I have to acknowledge Bob later. And I know Bob King was a great quarterback for Valley City State in the 1950s. I saw my first Valley City State football game in 1961. I wasn't born until 14 years later, if you're wondering how old I was. But I, I saw my first football game in 1961. And I had a cousin that played at Valley City at that time, and then another cousin, his brother, that came in 1962 and was an all-conference quarterback and is in our Hall of Fame. And then Corey and I talked about all the quarterbacks that have come from that time on. And, and really, it's a position that we have been blessed to have. I mean, if I say Darren Lowe and if I say Mark Smetana, and if I start naming names, it, it's like a legacy of quarterbacks. And we talked about statistics, and then I said to Corey, okay, here's the deal. If you had to win one game, who would you pick? And we just looked at each other and we said, exactly. If we had to win one game, who would we pick? And I'm going to war with you, guy. I'm going to war with you for that game. Because whether you had to draw plays up in the dirt, or whether you know, no matter what you had to do, you would do everything you could to put your team in a winning position. That's just how good you were and how valuable. Steve, I want to thank you, guys. I've got another person in my table that's really, really important to me, Jeff Manley. Jeff was the first student athlete that I signed to a letter of intent. Um, I look back and I wish I wouldn't have done it under these conditions because they played in a regional basketball tournament and they got beat out that night so they were, their season was basically done. But Jeff, with all the class that he had, still signed that letter of intent. Um, these two guys were among the hardest workers that I ever had. And I, I remember the recruiting process really well for both of them. I remember going to watch Jeff Porter back a state championship high school team when he played for Carrington in, in Bismarck. Um, great football team, great quarterback, great leader. We knew we were getting a real, real, real talented person when he came to Valley City. Uh, I remember visiting Steve on his farm in 1987. Jada was with me, Jada was four years old, and what I remember about that, two things. They had a big dog at Steve's farm. And we were out in the, all, on, the, on the driveway, and this dog kept running around, and Jada claims this isn't true, but I'm sure it is. About three times that dog knocked her down. And Steve's dad and I thought that was the funniest thing we'd ever had. And Jada will talk now about how, how paranoid she was about dogs at that time, but we thought it was a great thing, that dog just knocking Jada down. But I'll never forget what Jerome Pike said to me that day in the driveway. He said, you've probably got better athletes at Valley City State. You've probably got 
people that have done better in the classroom. But I'll tell you one thing about my son. You won't find anybody that will work harder or compete harder. And, and for anybody that knows anything about track, I didn't, I, I'm not a stats guy. I don't really pay that much attention to records. But 23 times in his career, Steve Feig ran under 23 seconds in the 200 meter dash. Now, um, if, if you figure how many outdoor track meets there are in a year, and you figure four years, 23 times under 23 seconds, that's an amazing record. He'll say he didn't do it, but he did. I know he did, he kept track of it. Corey, Guy, I wanna thank you for everything you do for Valley City, for our conference, for the way you host this event, it's really special. I wanna thank the Hall of Fame Selection Committee. There's a long story about how this happened and why I'm standing up here tonight. And I'm still a little bit bitter about those people. But, but the truth is, I said several years ago, I, several years ago, I said, because I, I kept saying no. And then I said, when the 2000, 2001 football teams go in, I want to go with that group. I mean, and I know other people have mentioned it tonight, but I was telling President Mason about this last week. That 0-10 season, we had 15 players that played as seniors in 2001 that stuck it out. The 2000-2001 the seasons were like magical. I, I still haven't watched it, and someday I'm going to, but there are three football games in the history of Valley City State that stand out to me, and that game in the Dome in 2000 is certainly one of them. That was just a great, great, great football game that night. And the way we competed for that afternoon, and the way we competed, and the way we played, couldn't be prouder of a team in the way you did that. Um, 2001, and I remember so much about that year, but here's what I remember best. Out at Carroll College, standing in that hallway after the game, knowing where the locker room was, and, and waiting for every one of those seniors to come out, and to get a hug from every one of those seniors. What a special group of people. What a special group. I love every one of you. So I've got a football with me tonight. And you guys won't remember this, but I remember it because it's, it's got it written right here. This was a game ball from that 2001 national playoff game. And all but one of the seniors signed this football. But when we did it, we had a really bad, extra fine Sharpie. And I know where you were headed right after that last player meeting and it was somewhere downtown, and you couldn't wait to get out of there, so you wouldn't let me get another another marker. So they are, all the signatures wore off. And so tonight, I've got, and a few people signed it today, I've got another Sharpie, and I'm asking every player that's here tonight that played in the 2000 and 2001 playoff games if you would sign this football. It would mean a lot. I, I wanna talk, yeah, you did. But you put number nine on there, not 83. <laughs> You're number 83 now. Nine is in the past. 83 is in the future. I, I, I'm not going to do this long, Paul, or I'm really not. But I want to talk real quickly about Viking Pride. Because I think that's what tonight is about. And everybody's got a story to tell. And everybody can, can remember when it hit. Every year I'm really fortunate because the first day the football team is here, Coach Mack lets me, lets me talk about Viking Pride. And I know in regard to the football team, they talk about Viking Pride meaning wear your colors. And I think that's an important part of it. And, and Viking Pride means a whole lot of different things to a whole lot of different people. But a few weeks ago when we played Jamestown in, in football here, 
Um, I also get a chance to talk to all the football recruits and their parents that come in that day. And, and I had a parent toward the end of that session ask the question, when I go watch that game today and my son watches that game today, what's gonna to be different about Valley City State and the football program here compared to the football program at the other campuses we visited, because we visited five of them. And, and I looked at him and I started to cry. Because I said, if, if you want me to try and quantify something, I, I could try to do that, but really, truly, in the quantifiable things, we're no different than Jamestown, we're no different than Mayville, we're no different than Dickinson. There's nothing quantifiable that makes us different. But if you want me to try to describe what it is, it's right here. It's in my heart. And it's been like that for a long time. In, in 1973, Patty was a senior in high school. And I've been out of school for two years. We came to Valley City State to visit the campus. And got to meet different coaches, but the one we were gonna spend time with was Dr. Gooders. And I'll, I'll just never forget it. I could take every one of you right to the step that we were on in the student center, going in the front door of the student center. When about six guys came out of the front door and a couple of them gave him hugs and the rest, now I do fist bumps today, you all know that, but back then it was a low five and the way he greeted those six guys and the way that he talked to them Long before Nike ever said, be like Mike, I wanted to be like Buck. And, and so since that time, I've had it in my heart. I've had breaking pride because of him. There's another person that's been really, really a huge factor in my life, and that's Bob King. I, I, I couldn't tell you enough good things about Bob King. He took a kid in New Rockford, North Dakota, and he took me on the golf course every day to hit practice balls, and he absolutely ran my guts out. Um, it, was, it was just the greatest fun ever. And, and to get the caddy for Bob King for the years that he was in New Rockford. No kid could be luckier. And to watch him coach football, five years they lost one game. To watch him coach football was more than a treat. Um, when I came to Valley City, I had three second fathers. And, and every one of those people needs to be recognized. One obviously was Dr. Gooders. Another one was Jim Dew. And I know a lot of you are going to say, I thought I was due, son. But I also thought I was due, son. And the third would be Don Lemnis. I'll, I'll tell you what, in the history of Valley City State, to have people like that, to have people like Bob Brushwine, to have people like Al Olson, to have the people that we've had that absolutely spend their lives and their careers making things better for young people, how lucky we all are to know people like that. And, and finally, I, I just need to tell you how lucky Diane and I were. We both came here in 1981. We were young pups, first year of college coaching. And, and here's what we were able to walk into. Bill Osmond, who had been more than a legend as an athletic director. Linda Roberts head basketball, head women's basketball coach, and head softball coach, Viking Hall of Fame. Terry Corwin, head gymnastics coach, Viking Hall of Fame. Jim Dew, head football coach, head baseball coach, Viking Hall of Fame. Don Lemnis, head wrestling coach, 
Defensive Coordinator for Football Viking Hall of Fame. Daryl Anderson, Head Basketball Coach, Tennis Coach, Viking Hall of Fame. And those were the mentors that Diane and I had and how lucky we were. And then Diane went on to a great coaching career, absolutely great, great coaching career, Viking Hall of Fame. So it's an honor for me to be here tonight to say that I knew those people, that I worked with those people, that I had an opportunity to be with those people. Because it's always a great day to be a Viking. It's always a great day to be a Viking. Now we're gonna do something that we've never done. I'm not gonna tell you what it is till I get these people up here. But when I ask you to come up here, you gotta come up and stand right here in front of the stage. Mac, I need you up here, guy. Love you, but I need you up here. Corner, I need you up here. Jill, I need you up here. I need the football coaches who were here in 2000, 2001. The football coaches who were here in 2000, 2001. I need Cheryl. I need Kelly. I'm, we're going to stand in front. We've got to me. Good. If you don't mind, we'll stand in front. Yeah. My mistake. I'm not a very good directioner. We have Kelly coming. We need Steve, number 83. We need Pesh. And if we have any captains here tonight from the 80 and 81 football team, Brent Miller. <laughs> we need you up here. Let's go, Brent. Come on, Brent. 80? Or that's 2000. 2000. 2000, yeah, 2000, 2001, my mistake. Yeah, seven, <laughs> We've never done this, and I've never understood why, but I don't have a lot of pull. But tonight I do, so this is what we're going to do. And then I hope that this is a tradition that's going to carry. So we'll do it next year, and we'll do it the next year, and we'll do it long after I'm no longer around. I'm going to come down before we do it, but we're going to sing this school song. And, and, and every, every, every person in here is going to stand up now listen, the only thing better than singing the school song once is to sing it twice. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to go through the whole doggone thing two times. And I did that in my class today, my assessment class, and I told them this is an assessment class. I have a rubric for you. And if you don't do it well enough, we're just going to keep doing it until we do it well enough. So can we do it with some excitement? All right, now there's one more thing. Please listen. Excitement is temporary, passion is forever. <laughs> Excitement is temporary, passion is forever. Let's have some passion when we do this. Everybody up.